Well, 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 Chandler, we're back. Good morning. I'm not wearing headphones. Back on YouTube, um, back on video. It's mm -hmm. actually a little bit like when we're on video, I feel like it's a little bit more high pressure. Like the people can see exactly what's happening. They know if everything's going off the rails. Right. I mean, if I had to clean my room. I had to make my bed, my princess bed for this. I had to, I didn't style my hair. Everyone, this is what my hair looks like when I wake up after I use the Dyson. Just want to let you know in case you were wondering if you could get a hair tutorial from me. Your hair actually looks really pretty. So you just brushed it this morning. You didn't morning. do anything else. Yesterday at 3 p.m., I did my hair and then last night I like, but then I just like hairsprayed it and then went to bed. And then this morning I woke up, I just lightly brushed the ends. Okay. Okay. And then I, I rolled into this recording session. So to continue our conversation from the Patreon episode mm -hmm. and to continue mm -hmm. making this podcast essentially a Dyson plug, you're telling me is that you can get perfect next day hair too, where you, if you Dyson before a date and then potentially you go on a date and you- There's a you romp know, in the whatever. sheets. There's, there's, <laughs> there's a morning experience, which we don't necessarily condone, mom, if you're listening. Definitely. I hope you're married. But let's say there's a morning experience with your husband. <laughs> um, <laughs> and what you're telling me is that you'll wake up and he'll think she has perfect hair naturally. Like this She's is so effortless. This is what he's going to wake up to. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do that again? Do that again? Okay, this is – guys, sometimes you have to watch the YouTube. To do you see my hair on a pillow? I'm truly so sorry. You Isn't look that? like an actual angel. So this is two things. One – you maintain the volume days after blow drying your hair. You maintain, I'm not going to say that this curl looks this intact on day four, but it's pretty, it's yeah. pretty good. It's just like loose. Also, you maintain the volume and two, and now I'm linking, sorry. But that's all that's needed, sis. That's no, honestly the thing I look for the most is volume in the length, like volume from my jawline down. Right. I'm trying to achieve oh. and it seems like that's what the Dyson's perfect for. Okay, this what is what I was going to say. So you maintain the volume days later, which is why the Instagram I recently posted, which is one of my best photos, I think, yet. I'm just going to go ahead and call it. Um, oh, yeah. Stunning. Stunning. That hair was day two hair. That was like a full 48 hours later hair. Wow. Oh, my so, gosh. Okay. I guess I know what I'm spending my stimmy on. Right. Um, Mr. Dyson, if you're listening, I, would, I actually don't need a second Dyson, but I would love any other products you'd like to send my way. Maybe a cordless vacuum. Yeah, Mr. Yeah, I'm sure Mr. Dyson, Dyson subscribes to the YouTube yeah. channel. This week, there's been a lot of news in the royals, news with when it comes to all things the royal mm -hmm. family. Prince right. Harry did a carpool karaoke with James Corden, if you would even call it that. Very pedestrian. It was more just like a bus interview. Right. Um, and they some call like, it you know, tea on the 405. Tell me, you just watched it. I watched it a couple days ago. So you're maybe a little more fresh on the take. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? I feel good. Harry is really hot. So I enjoy okay, any okay. sort of – what? That was uh, the takeaway. Okay. The takeaway mainly is that I think Megan's pretty boring. And I'm not like dislike Megan, but I found her FaceTime interaction Wait, to she – Okay. You're judging her based on a 15-second FaceTime? Yes. Yes, if she knew that she had to be on standby, that James Corden was going to call her. I expected a little bit more a quippy response. Basically, they're at, they go to the Fresh Prince house, and he was like, Harry, you should buy this. You can be the, the little prince who lives in the Fresh Prince's hair, uh, house. And they FaceTime Megan, and she's just she's like, I think we've done enough moving. Ha ha. And I just I expected more out of her. For an actress, someone who was in Hollywood. She's not a stand-up comedian. She's not a podcaster with 26 YouTube subscribers like us. We can't expect a lot from her. Yeah. She looks beautiful. She certainly had time to get ready. She probably had time to think of a one-liner. I mean, um, do you so, think that they prompted her with what they were going to ask? Yes, I'm sure. I'm sure they I'm sure oh, they really? I'm sure the Royals got a full briefing before on what they were what okay. was going to be expected okay. of them. So this is what I'm going to say about Harry. I mm -hmm. Just the last thing about his hotness, I did get a little bit tingly when he was like crawling in the mud. I don't know what it was. There was something that was happening there. When he crawled through the mud, there, that was like a, a hot experience for me. So the thing that's interesting about Prince Harry's hotness is that if he wasn't a member of the royal family, he would be like a decent, he'd be like a good looking guy. He's cute. Like, I for sure swipe like right on him. Oh, yeah. No, but that's what I mean. It's like you for sure swipe right. But he's not like hot by the standards of – No. He's like the best looking the guy. On, he's like your best 
like suitor on Bumble. He's like the guy that you're like, looking- I think this one that's a I think this guy's like a really good guy. This could be something. Totally. He's like the best looking good guy that mm-hmm. you can sw- that you can not only swipe but date. It's not like he would be Hollywood bound if he was just born no. into a normal family no. in Manchester or something. No. Do you like that flex not. of wow. you know London? <laughs> of, uh, Sussex. Yeah, London sur- suburb knowledge. Okay. Wow. Uh, my takeaway was that it feels okay, and this is just my hot take, but I feel like what they're trying to do is they're trying, they know the British press hates them and they're not going to go live a life of obscurity. I think that their way to make money, which they need to do, is mm-hmm. based on their celebrity. So I think that the strategy now is win over the American people. Now, all that we care about is the American press, how we're received by the American people. And so we're going on like James Corden's carpool karaoke. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to do Oprah. How do you get to the heart of the nation? It's an Oprah interview. Right. And so- I couldn't agree more. I also think that his like, his pretty candid response about the crown, but he wasn't even particularly negative about it. I think that was endearing, but he didn't say that show is false. It's completely wrong. Like the American people love the crown and he didn't just completely throw it out the window. He knows his audience at this point and he's not going to take the crown away from us. But I think that, yeah, I thought that was an interesting answer. And he basically was like, it gives a good indication of what the pressures are like. And he used it as a segue to criticize like the British press. Yeah, But I thought it was interesting because- I think what people may, might miss is that the crown, or I'm sorry, Prince Harry doing all of this, it's not like him going on James Corden, them doing Oprah. It's not, this is this is just random like gestures of goodwill. No, or it's like, not, I guess I've got some free time, so I'll go on these talk shows. Totally. There's a PR strategy here, right? There's like a, this is a public relations move. And the PR move here is, I think, to introduce themselves as American celebrities. Right. It's a coordinated strategy for sure. For sure. And the message is that they're finding refuge in Santa Barbara and with the American people. And maybe Harry's heart's going to beat red, white, and blue pretty soon. I'm not sure. Did you see the teaser of the Oprah interview? No, I didn't see the teaser. Okay. We have to stop this and you have to go watch it. And then we will. It's 30. it's, It's one minute. Okay. Oh my. Okay. Okay, you're good. That does not look like the sanitized mumbo jumbo that I was anticipating. Thank you. I feel vindicated. You basically said when we first were discussing it, like, oh, I just feel like it's going to be more like wishy-washy than talking about charity work. Yeah, their podcast is totally sanitized nonsense or I guess just sanitized non-nonsense, which is what we do not prefer. This is going to be like very juicy. Yeah, I feel like... She looks like she was like on the verge of tears. Like in both of those clips, she looks very like somber and sad. Oh, a hundred percent. And I think what's really interesting about it is Oprah says, were you silent or were you silenced? Mm -hmm. And that's not about the British press. That's about the royal family. Right. That's about the, the like the royal establishment, right? right. And the courtiers. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think that even in the preview, they show her them basically uh, taking shots at the crown, not the show, but the actual like monarchy. Right. This is going to be well, so good. It's Oprah two hours. says. Oprah says there's nothing that's off limits. Do you think they're going to talk okay. about their sex life? I hope so. And all the Disney <laughs> movies that they watch oh my gosh Um, so one of the best facts you guys is that harry and megan have publicly said that they both love disney movies and watch disney movies together as adults grow up in their 30s it's disgusting it's It's appalling also i don't harry did not look very hot in that interview i'm not gonna lie he looks better in like street clothes harry is a medium hot person harry is not like a gq model and okay i don't know why they also took that distinction they took a shot at Prince Charles because they said they were like, it's just so nice that we have each other to go through this with. Whereas like he said, I can't imagine her referring to Princess Diana doing this all alone. Oh, wait, that's a very good th- and way to pick up on that. I didn't even pick up on that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's so interesting. They've clearly just completely left the family. Totally. They've f- f- completely like cut ties to some degree or it's very strained. Also, going back to the James Corden interview, he said, 
we he, they were talking about using Zoom, and James Corden was like, "Does the Queen know how to use Zoom?" And he said, "Yeah, we we've, we've FaceTimed, or he said we've we've chatted a few times." Okay, they've oh, lived yeah. here for a year, and they said a few times. I think he said two times. Yeah. Okay, so that's like essentially never. Ah, <sighs> chilling, Chandler. Let's move on because there's other news this week, and something mm-hmm. I really wanted to discuss with you. Okay, Lady Gaga, her dogs were kidnapped mm-hmm. viciously, viciously. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did and her dog walker was shot. Yeah. Well, this is what I was going to say. I feel like the dog walker being shot four times has been like the B side story. It's been like in the fine print yes. of every article yes. about this. Yeah. No one cares about the actual human being that was shot four times. It's like everyone is up in arms about the dog. Right. Right. The two dogs. The two dogs and I, or the dogs, excuse me. And it's, that is what's so strange to me about dog culture is like it, it, and we have a sister who's obsessed with her dog. Like when it comes to dogs, like people care so much about dogs than humans. Shouldn't we, shouldn't the leading story be that her dog walker was shot four times. And then at the end, it should say that the assailant. It should at least be the secondary, it should be the secondary piece of information. It should be the primary piece of information. No, it I'm saying the, the, yeah, the dogs being stolen should be the secondary piece of information. Exactly. The headline yeah. should be Lady Gaga's dog walker was shot four times. And then in the article, it should mention that the dogs were taken. But no, it's you have to basically be a detective to figure out that this person is Honestly. like... <laughs> And you didn't even, we didn't hear anything about who he was or anything. It was just like, where are these dogs? Where are they? Like, where have they gone? They've been recovered. <laughs> well, and that's the other thing is it's like, okay, so she puts out the, she has a $500,000 reward f- if you find them. Oh, miraculously, some chick appears with them, yeah. finds them in an alley. Really, really. Like who believes that? There was a woman in San Francisco like two months ago who got, who was like pistol whipped and her dog was also stolen. Her French bulldog was stolen. And I think like these dogs are worth a lot of money. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. What does I think pistol they're, whip they're, mean? Like literally, there someone hits her with the side of the gun, and she what? like yeah, and her like. How do you know thing. the street slang? I lived in big cities just- all around. I used to live in LA. <laughs> now I live in San Francisco. Yeah. I just think that it seems like the the people that actually kidnap the dogs. It's basically not even the story anymore. Like no one cares. It's like she got the dogs back. The dog walker who, no one cares. And I feel like this is where every criminal that's been prosecuted and captured and pursued went wrong, okay? Because, because they this, should is like have done Scott, this. this is where Scott Peterson went wrong. Yeah. Before he got rid of the wife, he really needed to have, have one of the dogs kidnapped or something bad happened to one of the dogs. People wouldn't even have focused on the fact that they couldn't find Sarah or whatever and her name was. It would just be all about, like, where are the dogs? Like, what happened to the dog? Michelle, can we get Michelle. the dog back? Michelle. Then he can bring back, unveil the dog, okay? Right. People won't even ask questions about Michelle. They'll just be so happy that the dogs are safe and home, okay? Wow. He could still be – He, you could literally be swiping on Bumble right now with Scott Peterson if he, you know, took my advice. <sighs> The thought of that makes me ill, but that's actually not out of the realm of possibility because Scott Peterson is literally at San Quentin, which is only a little bit north of me. It's a hop, skip, and a jump. It I really think Scott is. Peterson is like already married in prison to oh, some yeah. wacko. Yeah. Yeah. All this thing, this like dating website that's just for dating prisoners. It's tough out there. If there's some people who's ever dated a prisoner, I would like to interview you. If you are currently married to or dating a prisoner, we would love it if you would come on the podcast, tell us about your experience. Okay, Chandler, I have to talk to you about something else that is going on with me this week. Okay, what? I have discovered a show on TLC called My Five Wives. And I It's not Sister have- Wives. Not Sister Wives. It's another polygamy show. I have, in general, a really bad attention span. Mm -hmm. I can just... It's very hard for me to get into shows. Yeah. This show is one of the best shows I've ever seen. It's absolutely riveting. Not only that, but it will just restore your faith in human love, familial bonds. Like, basically, these people, the stars of the show, the husband is... I want to read the text you sent me. That's... After you finish your dialogue. Okay, well, should I read it now? Why don't you read it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is so Lauren is clearly very into the show. I have not watched it yet, but it's something I'm planning on doing. 
So last night I'm minding my own business and I get this text. Okay. Let me just find it one second. Yesterday, 5 p.m. Okay. Like I know Mr. New York has been all sorts of wonderful, but honestly, you need Brady Williams in your life. He will heal you. Period. Full stop. <laughs> oh, you didn't even respond, by the way. I, I felt like it would have been disrespectful to respond, but I'm planning um, on bringing Brady Williams into my life. Okay. Brady Williams is like another Dr. Langer. Like the way that he is such a good man, Chandler, it will just floor you. This He's is all so- that I need. Truly balming and healing to watch him. He has five wives. He loves them all. He's deeply committed to them. He's emotionally present for them. If they have an issue, he is hearing them. And and you can tell he's not like, he's not placating them. He's not trying to get them to stop being emotional. He's not doing the normal guy thing, which is like trying to get the drama to be over. He's like digesting what they're saying. He's empathizing with them. He's doing the work. Remember, he has five wives I, most I men can't up. even most men can't even emotionally like no. deal or satisfy one woman no offense men out there not to stereotype but most men don't want to talk about feelings as much as their one wife does let alone emotionally satisfying their his five wives it wow. is it's nothing short of miraculous Chandler not only that but the wives are like they're very I, I honestly, I could do a whole show about these people. They're very human. Okay. So it's not like they're like, like these passive robots. I don't think they fall into polygamy. Okay. I'll get there in a second, but they're very human, but they're also like, like extremely good people. Like it's actually, it reminded me of what a bad person I am in comparison. What a shallow, selfish, narcissistic. I mean, these people are so salt of the earth. Let me give you one vivid example, okay? Okay. okay. I'm so worked up about this show. Okay, so it's it's 10 year anniversary, okay? With one mm-hmm. of the wives, Rhonda. She Rhonda. works at, she's like basically a nurse. Okay. Rhonda's a nurse. She's an actual angel her. on this earth. Yes. And it's their 10 year anniversary, okay? Yeah. And for the 10 year anniversary, she's the fifth wife. For their wow. tenure and a yeah, so he hasn't for even taken ten- like a new one. Sorry, in a while, so it's not like he's like trying to find younger new wives. No, they're all basically around the same age. So Rhonda, he dated. Yeah, no, I'm serious. I'm serious. There's nothing seedy. I, 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 I honestly, if someone can find anything negative about Brady Williams, please don't even try because it will ruin my <laughs> faith in humanity. But I like that. There is nothing out there. There's no skeletons in the closet. Brady Williams is an angel. And okay. So anyway, it's their 10 year anniversary and they're four years late going on a trip. Okay. First of all, four so years busy. late. For their 10 year anniversary, they each get a week long trip with Brady, which is like a big deal, obviously. Right, right totally. Um, in that family. Okay, so let me tell you what the trip is it's going and staying at her in law's house in Washington for a week. And she's just, and she's just, <laughs> <laughs> and she's just so happy to do it. Like it's like it's like it's like she it's like this is gonna be a it's a getaway. This is gonna be a great experience. Yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, us bitches, we're like, oh, I don't want to. It's three stars, you know. Like, can we get can we stay somewhere a little nicer? Right, right. Like, we are such brats compared to these. I people. mean, no, I don't consider she just looks- staying at someone else's house a vacation. Oh, no, this is her 10-year anniversary trip that's four years late, staying with her in-laws, okay? Not only that, she's looking forward to it. There's this, they're such precious people. Okay, there's this scene where they're on the anniversary trip and they go out to, like, they're on, like, a dock and it's chilly. It's in Washington. And, you know, he puts his arms around her and they're looking out and then they cut to her interview and she was like... It was a little cold on the dock and Brady put his arms around me so we could get warm and I didn't mind that. Like that is, that is the level of just like, just like, I, I, I like that a lot. Like, and then the girls together when they're talking, they'll like giggle about how cute his arms are or like, they have like such a camaraderie as sister wives and they like truly love each other. Like, it's honestly, are we sure I, that- like these one of these women are not the three Nephites. I I can't believe that these people are actually humans because they are so angelic. I can't like, either. 
It's astonishing. They're so wonderful. And it makes me realize I'm honestly going to try to become a better person after watching this show. I think My Five Wives is my new religion. Like I'm going to watch it every day for 10 minutes like you would read the scriptures. Like I'm not kidding. Like it's my compass. Good. I am so glad you found this like in your for your life. And I I can't wait to see the the journey and the progress of how I'm going to benefit from this new you. I can't I mean, wait until I, you watch it and we can we can discuss because it's truly going to restore you as well. I I can't wait. I that's the way I felt about Lennox Hill. Lennox Hill was, as you said, bombing, restorative, all those things. I already told Mr. New York when I go there, I need him to take me by Lennox Hill. I would like to go to my favorite hospital in New York. <laughs> Maybe get an autograph from Dr. Langer. I'm honestly, I don't think they're gonna let me in because of the Rona. But I'm definitely just, just going to – I'm going to walk the wall the, out at the exterior and just feel close to I'm Dr. Sure, Langer. I'm sure you can go on, like, the dark web and get a consult, like, request for <laughs> <A> neurosurgery. <laughs> I'm sure my <laughs> get insurance would love that. Yeah, totally. Um, no, I mean, like, in the way that Lennox Hill is about good people working hard and, you know, like, doing something important with their lives, like, something we know nothing about. Right. Um, uh, it's, it's the exact same way for my five wives. Like it's just truly wonderful. They're such a wonderful family. And it made me really rethink, like, I don't, I'm not necessarily a polygamy shipper, but what I realized was, is it better to have 20% of a really, of a, of a truly angelic right. man rather than a hundred percent of another guy? I don't I know. know. Of someone who's subpar. That's a great question. Jury's officially out. Yeah. Jury's officially yeah. out. Any, anything about the listeners, please weigh in. Yes, please. What's interesting about them, though, is that they were part of the UAB, AUB, one of the two, United Something Brethren, who are Mormon fun- fundamentalists. They're not FLDS. Okay. It's like another sect. So there's a lot of people who are in this like Mormon fundamentalism group yeah. in Utah. Okay. And they wear Where do normal they live? clothes. They live, they, I think they live in the Orem because they always show them going to Black Sheep Cafe or like they've oh, shown it twice. Okay, okay, and he like okay. goes, he goes to Goldsmith Jewelry, yeah. you know, in Provo. Yeah. So it's so okay. funny to watch. Um, but so they're no longer, they're no longer part of the UAB. Fundamentalists. So UAB people totally dress normally. Like you probably wouldn't even know that they're polygamous. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, they left the UAB. I think I'm getting that wrong, but they left that fundamentalist sect. Now they don't practice like any religion. They just like, believe in God and stuff. Right, they said, right. decided to stay together as a family because wow. they love their family. And like, they had already had 20, 23 kids or whatever it is by the time they all you know, collectively left the church. People, I'm sure almost everyone has turned this off. But you should listen to his pod. There's a podcast. He doesn't have a podcast, but he has an interview. And he talks about why he left the UAB. And it's like the most beautiful story. Really? Anyway, yes, this is my new religion. My five he ha- wives. He has a podcast? Or he goes on a podcast? No, he, he goes and does a podcast interview. And he describes why they left and what his, he had this huge wake up call. It's just. <sighs> okay. Brady Williams. Anyway. I'm very afraid that I'm boring everyone to tears, but no. that's... I need to watch Men Everywhere Are Quaking in the Shadow of Brady Williams. And, and I mean, he, he like he supports his family. He has a construction company. Works with his it, hands. He, exactly. He does good, honest work. It's it's pretty phenomenal. Oh, my gosh. I need... I have the chills just talking about I it. I mean, this is me with Lennox Hill, so like, I'm, I'm here for it, and I'm just so excited for my own journey. Like sometimes... Sometimes you need to be reminded what it's like to not be like a totally selfish, like self-centered, you know, like superficially well, obsessed person. You I know? started wa- totally. I started watching Selling Sunset because I missed the boat on that one, and I'm super late to it. This and is going to go the opposite way. And I, I don't. I first of all, I didn't realize Chris Shell was married to the guy from This Is Us or now divorced. Okay, yeah, I, I didn't even realize who she was. And the main girl, who's I've only watched like the first three episodes, but the whole thing is kind of gross to me. Like, it's, I don't like the way they dress. I don't like the way they talk. Like, it is not my brand of like of fame and wealth. It's literally so gross. It's like the most disgusting yes. part of culture. And I mean, it just makes you really read like what your values are when you're watching a show like that. Oh, a, a thousand percent. And I honestly, like after looking at like their styling and their hair and makeup, I'm like, I'm so glad that I only wear mascara like twice a week, if that. 
I am not interested in looking like that any of those women like ever in my life. Yeah. It's just a very like LA type look. of glam. I, it's just there's like it's, no it, other it, way to describe it. It's a type of look that some men are really into. Like that's like the penultimate. Totally. Um well I think they're gross like twin the guys who like I don't know. The whole thing is like, I don't know. Gross. It's kind of, yeah, it, it, it's super materialistic. I think people watch it for the crazy drama and the amazing homes and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. But I don't know. It's not necessarily the most edifying content to use the mom's words. I will tell you, and I would be interested in your opinion on this, speaking yeah. of style, speaking of glitz and glam, I kind of like basically had a little bit of a moment where I was like, why do I even continue to like care about so wait, you're saying you had a moment where you wanted to maybe well, step just, away from some glam. Well, I had a moment where I was just like, if Kagan doesn't like any of the clothes I wear generally, and he really prefers me in just like a tank top and shorts or a pair of jeans, and like that's what he finds attractive. Like there was a part of me that's like, why am I continuing to shop and invest in clothes that necessarily make my partner less attractive to me. And I think there's something about like having your own personal style and loving how you look and loving what you wear. And I totally am right. all about that. But then I also felt like, well, I honestly am much more attracted to him when he presents himself in a certain way than others. Uh -huh. And like, uh -huh. if I can, if I can just, I don't know, like there's a part of me that's like, why, I mean, why I don't know. I just felt like maybe I, maybe I just will like go more low key. Maybe I'll go for a more natural low key vibe if that's what he thinks is really hot. I like that vibe too. Why do I continue to choose like more of like an ostentatious, like very expensive clothing vibe if that's if he doesn't even like it? Does that make sense? I yeah that that makes sense. So does this mean you're going to retreat back to the surfer girl aesthetic? That we grew up with. I, mean, I will never, I will never be a girl straight out of Hobie okay. or a surf okay. store. I just want to make that but super clear. I might retreat to more of a Levi's and white t-shirt vibe, tank I mean, top. I, There's not going to be a printed tee. Okay. Rude. I'm not going to have any sort of long shawl on at any point in time. Okay. Okay. I, I'm here for it. I think no I don't think that's a bad idea. My future. Okay. I, I don't think that's a bad idea. I had a similar moment after my spending freeze where I was like, why I don't need to be buying myself as much clothing as I do as much like glam. Like I'm not really going anywhere. I I think I have plenty of beautiful clothes. Like I, it's kind of embarrassing when I'm out of a call because like, all people can see our clothes. And I think I'm here for this new journey for us. It's minimal, more Williams wives type of look. Well, it's more just like, what's it for? Like, what is right. the point? Like, like, I don't know. I don't I mean, know. I, I think I'm just trying to like evaluate, I guess. I mean, I like feeling stylish, but I just don't, I think there's like a, I think I, do I, I can maybe cut back a little bit on how much, on how, on how much I'm consuming. Right. Yeah. To to I think that's really what it's about. It's like, I can still do this, but I don't need to be like feeding the beast as much as I have been, you know? I'm realizing now that I'm a huge hypocrite because yesterday was the first day that I was off of my spending freeze and I spent a lot of money. What did you buy? I bought some fun things to wear when I went in New York. Okay, okay. Were so, they things that you think are hot or that you think Mr. Uh, New York will think are hot? Probably a little bit of both, but mostly okay. me. Mostly me. That's a, healthy, that's a healthy mix. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's different when you're going on a trip. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Yeah. completely different. Okay, there was something – okay, I also wanted to shout out – there's a really good documentary on HBO Max called The Lady in the Dale. I've been meaning to recommend it for forever to our listeners and to you. I highly recommend it. It's about it's about basically like a con person, and it's also about the trans experience. And so it interweaves this really interesting story about this total con person. I and started and like, and I haven't finished it, but I really like what I've seen. You do? Yeah. 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 It's really – it's fascinating. I'm just like, how did I not know this person existed? It's so fascinating. Yeah. It's so well done. Mm -hmm. But then the, the I would say the last two episodes are more about the trans experience, or at least it interweaves more. And yeah. it's very much, I don't know, it's just really good. To, I think it's a really okay. good one to watch. Um, um, I highly recommend it. I started a new show. What? Uh, completely in the other direction. Outlander. Are you familiar? Oh, Okay, I've never been able to get into it, or I've never actually even watched it. I think I've watched like five minutes, and I was like, this is too weird. I mean, so, it was boring. No. You know Help that me. comedian, Heather McManahan or whatever? She's, do you know that comedian? She's hilarious. Heather McMahon, yeah. He yeah. Heather McMahon, yeah. 
I follow her on Instagram now. I think she's so funny. And she's constantly talking about these hot Irish men. So okay. I said to I said to Mr. New York, I was like, we need to be watching Outlander. There's really hot Irish men in it. And it's it's history, it's sexy. This is something I'm gonna start like taking in and like making a part of my life. If you wanna be a part of my life, you need to be watching it with me. So I'm currently I'm I'm on the first season and it's really hot. It's way sexier than you might think. Okay. Really? How did you how did you intro it to your boyfriend and tell him we should watch this? show about really hot guys that doesn't make any sense to me i'm just an honest Can you imagine if he was like he was like chairman we gotta watch this show it has so many hot chicks in it like <laughs> yeah that wouldn't be that would be unacceptable uh um but you'd highly recommend how many episodes how many minutes do i have to get do i have to watch before it all get into it give it like the first three watch the first three, three episodes three episodes oh, yeah oh, it's a lot I mean, of work i just i like historical dramas okay okay I, yeah, I think I like them when they look – when they're really well done. But if I don't believe it and it looks like people in costume to me, it's really hard for me to get into it. The actor who plays – well, he's not even the hottest actor by far. But the actor who plays Prince Philip in The Crown, like in the most recent season of The Crown, he's also in this as well. Okay. I yeah. Can't, I, I can't place that person. Oh, wait. I know yeah. what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Give, Give it, it a shot. Chandler, this week, another Baldwinito was born. How? I well, don't get it. Is through surrogacy, which makes me think: How many have any of her kids been through a surrogate, or is it just this one? I think it's just this one, number six. Okay. No, it's six. No, this is the sixth. He has seven kids because he has Ireland with his first right. wife. Right. Yeah. Um, or Ireland, just saying her inheritance, just getting another <laughs> another piece of the pie. Yeah, honestly, I hope she's put, putting money right. to that four hundred one k. Yeah. I mean, the only way she could re-enter society is through having another baby. Like, oh, do so we you think, think it's like a PR thing? Yeah, yeah. When did H HB two gate happen? Oh, Christmas? that's interesting. I like, mean, it, no, it wasn't was nine like, months ago. It was like two months ago. Yeah, HB so like, it's not like, was like, like yeah. That being said, this is how she makes her reentry. Okay. Do you think that they found a pregnant woman and said, "We'll pay you X amount of dollars for your kid"? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because we need a kid right because we've been canceled and now a way to get uncanceled is to have a child i think we've exactly. all seen that with stassi schroeder stassi's basically uncanceled. It's, it's it's the hail mary if you will very smart very smart very smart i can't wait to see the name that's what i'm most excited about i i don't think they're gonna release it because i think he's she's she can't have five spanish-esque names and then i don't know like Freaking, you know like, sarah or something right. like it has to be McKay, yeah. It yeah. has to be another like Leonardo Ricardo. So maybe it'll be a little bit more, maybe it'll be a little bit less sounding. I don't know. Speaking of yeah. people having babies, Morgan Stewart had her baby. What do we oh, think we about the name? Yeah, about we haven't about this. We don't, what do we think? Okay, I think the name Ro is phenomenal. It's a really cute name. I think it's clean, it's classic, three letters. It's definitely unique. And I don't know how I'd feel if my name was Ro, but it I do think spelled that- spelled like the verb. I wish it was spelled almost like in a more annoying way so that like it felt R -O -E. like- R-O-E. Yeah, or R-O, yeah. H-E, I don't know. Rahu. I don't love it, I'm going to be honest. The spelling doesn't bug me. I think that the, <sighs> I don't know. I think that the thing about- Morgan Stewart having a kid and probably why we didn't even talk about it is that she's not showing the baby's face. And so she's not even showing pictures of the baby and she's going to be another celebrity, which I totally endorse. And I think is good, but it's boring for audi an audience. I know, like it's I know. boring for us. It just feels like the way everyone's going. Me. Yeah. It's definitely the safe way to go, but it's boring for us following you. Like I don't want to see your husband and your baby off in the distance. I don't right. want to see your baby's hand holding your hand. I want to see a picture of your baby. Right. Right. It really is. It, it really is. I'm glad that the McGraws were there. They're pretty cute. Bro McGraw. Oh. There's a really weird middle name. There's, I know. I was actually going to look it up. Let me look it up really quick. This is the weird middle name. Ro Rengli Rengli. McGraw. So the middle name is R E N G G L I. Where? What? What kind of I name don't even know. is that? It's got to be some sort of family name. I, I mean, yeah, and maybe I'm pronouncing it wrong, but like Rangley, it looks like a, a noodle. It's like a noodle variety. <laughs> and, oh my gosh, it's, it's like Jordan's favorite pasta. Yes, or Phil, Dr. Phil's. It's like an ode to Dr. Phil's favorite lunch. Yeah. Yeah. Robin, can you make uh, me some of the Rangley? Well, at least she's angling, you know, to get in Dr. Phil's good graces. Because we all know what that's going to turn out into. As, as, 
as any smart woman would. Um, okay, I need to run to uh, my job. But Okay. It's been a pleasure. A pleasure as always. Um, guys, let me know when you want the hair tutorial. Let me know. All right. Love you, sis. I love you. Look, you look great. Bye. Thank you. That's all for now, folks. Don't forget, give us a five-star review. Hit us up on Instagram at Apologists, and we will see you next week, live every Wednesday. Bye.